All right, Stockmaster fans, continuing with some TV stuff, it's time for Leave it to Beaver Season 3. Let's check it out. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 1, Blind Date Committee. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Anything new happening at your school, Wally? Well, they're having a dance Saturday night. I'm on the dance committee. Oh, well, fine. How'd that come about? Duke Hathaway appointed me. I don't believe I've heard of Duke Hathaway before. Oh, Wally found out what his job is on the dance committee. We finally got to talk to the Duke. Mm-hmm. He's chairman of the Blind Date Committee. They get dates for girls who have no escorts. Uh, I'm Wally Cleaver from high school, and I'm chairman of the Blind Date Committee. I'm trying to find her a date for Saturday night. I'd kind of like to know something about her. Well, Duke Hathaway appointed me chairman of the Blind Date Committee, and we got you down for Jill Bartlett. Huh? Uh, she can't be that bad. <laughs> well, um, I think I ought to kind of resign. Resign? <laughs> Two days before the dance? Oh, come on now, boy. <laughs> well, but gee, Duke, I'm not getting any place. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to go if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Well... I would like to ask you if you would consider going with me. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Cleaver. Gee, that's a very nice sweater, Mrs. Cleaver. Well, thank you, Eddie. My mother has one just like it that's imported. <laughs> Eddie, have you ever seen her? Sure. I saw her in the hall with a couple other gophers. <laughs> you mean she's not so good looking? Oh, no. She's good looking, all right. If you happen to like gophers. <laughs> Just wish I didn't have to go tonight. Why would you say that? Because Jill Bartlett's a gopher. Wally, that's a terrible thing to say. Now, I'm sure Jill's a very nice girl. Well, uh, did you have a nice time? Oh, yes. I danced almost every dance, except I think it was one or two. Well, you see, some of my friends didn't show up. Well, and anyway, I wanted to bring you over here for a soda afterwards. I'll... And you were running out of money to pay your friends to dance with me. <laughs> no, I... Oh, I saw you. Oh, it was very considerate of you. You're kind of pretty, and you're a real good dancer, too. Just the same, there has to be something wrong with me. Well, I don't know what it is. You mean some of the guys dance with her for nothing? Uh, sure, she's not so bad. Do you like her? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I like her. You don't love her, do you? <laughs> no, I don't love her. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 2, Beaver Takes a Bath. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Can your father drive us to miniature golf in the morning? No. Mom and him are going out of town for the night. Boy, you mean you and Wally will be all alone in the house by yourselves? No, they're getting Mrs. Evans to stay with us. Hey, Dad, if I saved up my allowance, could I buy a monkey? <laughs> of course not. Okay, then I won't save up. <laughs> Mrs. Evans can't come. Well, can't we get someone else? Not at the last minute. I guess I'll just have to stay home with the boys. Well, no, Wally. Uh, if you're going to do Mrs. Evans' job, why, we're certainly going to expect to pay you the same money we were going to pay her. Well, sure, Dad. Why do you think I brought it up? <laughs> to tell you to get upstairs and take a bath. I was already upstairs. Look, Beaver, I'm getting paid to tell you what to do. So you're gonna do it, see? We're the boss around here. if mom and dad were here no i guess i wouldn't well then why did you do it when i'm here i guess i'm not as scared of you as i am of them <laughs> oh um hi mrs mondella hello boys hi uh, larry and i were out shopping and 
I came by to see how you were getting along with your parents away. Oh, we're getting along just fine, aren't we, Wally? What'd you guys mess up? Beaver let the bathtub run over. All over the house? No, all over the bathroom. <laughs> Like something fell in the kitchen. <laughs> Ward, come here. <laughs> wow. I guess there's only one thing we can do. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. We want to tell you something, Dad. What? To come home to a hole in the ceiling? Well, if everything had gone all right while we were away, we'd never have known what really nice boys we have. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 3, School Bus. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Commencing tomorrow, school bus service will be extended to all school areas. Well, in other words, those of you who have been walking to school may now ride the bus. Oh. Hi, Beaver. Hi. I saved your seat, Beaver. Bye, son. Bye, Dad. Bye, Beaver. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Wally. We regret to inform you that your son Theodore has has been suspended from riding the school bus for a period of one week. Reason, conduct, not up to fourth grade behavior pattern. Well, good heavens, what did you do? What did you do? I hit a kid on the head. Oh, Beaver, that was a terrible thing to do. No, it's not. It was Charles Fredericks. Well, why would you suddenly hit Charles Fredericks on the head? Because he suddenly hit me on the head first. <laughs> Beaver hit a boy on the head. Yeah, I know. Charles Fredericks. Charles started it, but he didn't get caught. Well, then it wasn't Beaver's fault. Well, no, not entirely, but he still shouldn't have been fighting on the school bus. Beaver? Hi, Dad. I'm taking a bath. Well, that's fine. But first, I want you to write a note to the bus driver telling him how sorry you are for your part in the trouble. The note? Me? Yeah. My dear Mr. Crawford, I am writing this letter to you because I am sorry I hit Charles Fredericks on the head. You are such a good bus driver that anyone who would make trouble on your nice bus is very bad and won't do it again. Mr. Crawford just called, and guess what? He wants to give our boys guitar lessons. No, he read Beaver's note, and he says starting Monday morning, Beaver can start riding the bus again. Well, I guess matters pay off. Won't you come in? Thank you, Miss Cleaver. Beaver! Yes, Mom? Judy Hensler's here. Tell her to beat it. Well... I got suspended from the school bus today. Tough. Well, Beaver, you got thrown off the school bus, and you got back on again. And I just thought you could tell me how you did it. Well, what'd you go and do that for? I won't need it. I'm not going to get any more bus trouble. Well, yeah, but Judy Hensler, she's not going to appreciate it. In a week, she'll have forgotten all about it and be giving you the business again in school. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 4, Beaver's Pride. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Beaver, were you in here today? Is today Friday? Yes, today is Friday. Guess I sort of was. Did you get in my desk? I didn't get all the way in. I might have had my hand in the drawer. Just what were you doing in here? Now, Beaver, this is the second time you've spilled ink in the study. You're going to have to be punished. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, tomorrow is Saturday. Uh, you're, you're not to make any dates. I, I want you to stay around the house all day and not leave the premises. Now remember, young man, you're not to leave the property today for any reason. Not even if there's a fire? <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, you want to go to the Mayfield Theater? They got a neat Western and general picture. Well, I can't. Look, Beaver, the Lone Ranger. Hi, up. Gee, Larry, I think you're funny about going to the movies. I better go home. What do you mean, go home? 
They already bought the tickets. <laughs> Yo, I was scared they get in big trouble. Girls, we're ready now for another big drawing here at the Mayfield Theater. And this week, our prize is this beautiful, genuine English racing bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Go on. Come on up, son. Come on now, don't be bashful. Come right up, son. That's the boy. That's the boy. Don't be bashful. Nobody's gonna hurt you. No, I don't want it. What's that you said? I don't want the bike. <laughs> Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls? He doesn't want the bike. Now, Larry, I want to know where you got that bike. Well, I told you, Mom. I was walking along the street with Beaver, and this big black limousine stopped, nearly a block long. And a millionaire got out, and he gave me the bike. And all I gotta do to keep it is not tell where it came from. Well, I might go to the movies. We're going to the movies, huh? Fine. Yeah, I might go to the movies and win a bicycle, and I kind of feel lucky. Win a bicycle at the movies? Yeah, they were off the mall. Oh, hello, Miss Mandela. Mr. Cleaver, my husband doesn't feel that Larry should be keeping Beaver's bicycle. Beaver's bicycle? What bicycle is that? The bicycle he won when he went to the movies with Larry this afternoon. You saw them yesterday? Well, um, yeah. Yeah, over on Grant Avenue, but... Well, Wally, why didn't you come to us and tell us? <laughs> Gee, Dad, I didn't know anything then about him winning any bike. Well, you knew he wasn't supposed to be away from home, didn't you? Well, yeah, yeah. I... Straight, there are some things so important that you have to tell us. Well, yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Well, like if we were killing a guy, I'd probably come and tell you that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I didn't go to the movie. You didn't go to the movie? No, sir. I went yesterday when I wasn't supposed to. Oh, is that so? Yeah. I walked it back to Larry's house, and then Larry and I walked down to a church. To a church? Yes, sir. Larry wants something to do with babies in a movie. Do what? We left it on the front steps with a note. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 5, Baby Picture. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Oh, your class is going to have a project? Well, every class is going to have one. Well, the fifth grade is making a relief map out of wet paper, and the third grade is growing vegetables in the window box, and the second grade is making a dinosaur out of clay. <laughs> well, we're getting ours tomorrow. It's a whole... S what are we going to have for the boys? Oh, this is for everyone. You're all going to bring in your baby pictures, and then we'll vote to see who was the prettiest baby. Yes, Where is the picture, Mom? Well, Beaver was so anxious about them this morning that I mailed it to Miss Landers. But there's some others just like in an envelope on your father's desk. I think I'll take a look at it. Thanks, Mom. Wally, how can anyone do this to a baby? <laughs> oh, well, heck, Beaver. Uh, I've seen pictures like that in ads for talcum powder and stuff. Yeah, but nobody knows who they are. They're going to put me right up in the bottom board. <laughs> Say, dear, what are you doing with these baby pictures of Beaver? Oh, I got those after the school baby contest. I mailed one of them to Beaver's teacher yesterday. <laughs> one like these? Uh-huh. Well, it might embarrass him having his friends see them. Or do you think I'd send anything that would embarrass him? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Beaver didn't object, huh? Oh, here's a letter from your mother. Is this what you wanted to talk to me about? Uh-huh. Well, suppose I open it and then we'll talk about it. No! <laughs> oh, but Beaver, little baby pictures like this are just cute. Miss Landers, they're not cute when they're you. <laughs> Miss Landers, if you put that picture in the bulletin board, well, I'm gonna run away where nobody knows me and never come back to Mayfield again for the rest of my whole life till I die. <laughs> How long since you were a kid? Well, it was a while ago. Boy, you sure still remember what it was like. Thank you, Beaver. And if I ever start to forget, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know. 
There, how's that? Leave it to Beaver. Episode six, Beaver Takes a Walk. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Boy, that's just an old broken watch. It only has one hand. June, this is not a watch. This is my old pedometer. What's a pedometer? Well, you set it at zero and put it in your pocket and tell you how many miles you walked. Well, I, I guess when I was a boy, I must have walked 20 miles a day. Gee whiz, 20 miles? All with your feet? <laughs> All with my feet. My father gave it to me on a car. His father gave it to him when he was a kid. Well, you swore 20 miles a day. <laughs> Who told you that, baloney? My father told me, and he doesn't tell baloney. <laughs> Go on, Beaver. Nobody can walk 20 miles a day. Are you calling my father a liar? <laughs> okay. I'll bet. I'll bet you by tomorrow I'll walk 20 miles. Ring the dial. Boy, Beaver, you going to lose this one. <laughs> You walk now, Beaver. Two miles, and we'll hunt more. <laughs> Boy, and we've been walking since school's out, even. No wonder that guy on television died. Because I'm giving it to Whitey. Well, uh, for Lander, for keeps. For keeps. I bet it him and I lost it. Oh, boy. Dad's going to be sore when he hears about this. Well, what did you bet, Whitey? Boy, Beaver, this is the easiest bet I ever won. <laughs> that glove's a lot better than your crummy old flashlight. Don't be a sore head, Beaver. I might let you catch with it when I'm up at bat. <laughs> Come on, now. You can't be mad at everybody. I tell you what, let's forget all about it and go outside and play some catch. Come on, get your fielders, Matt. What'd you have to say a mean thing like that for? Ford, did you find out what was bothering the Beaver? Oh, I asked him if he wanted to go out and play catch, and he locked himself in the bathroom. He says he's mad at everybody. What's he mad at me about? Well, because you told him you used to walk 20 miles a day. <laughs> what? Yeah, he believed you, and he made a bet. Then he tried to prove it with a pedometer. He only walked about four miles, and he lost his glove. So now he's mad at you. You see, Beef, when I gave you my old pedometer, I wanted you to share my enthusiasm. So, uh... Well, when I said I walked 20 miles a day, I'm afraid I was exaggerating a little. Hey, Willie, that was pretty neat. Dad admitted he made up that walking stuff yesterday. Yeah. Hey, you know, next time Dad catches me telling a big story, I'm going to say I was just reminiscing about my childhood. <laughs> hey, Willie, that's pretty funny. Are you really going to do it? Nah, Dad might not think it's so funny. <laughs> for beaver dear i don't think you should have bought him a new glove he shouldn't lose things making bets yeah i know and i talked to him about that but uh i really thought this time it was partly my fault you wouldn't be interested gee dad don't stop telling us about the neat things you did even if you do exaggerate them up <laughs> leave it to beaver episode seven borrowed boat starring Barbara Billingsley. Gotta go right back. Don't fix any lunch for the beaver because he's gonna ride on a bus with a team. I'm gonna go upstairs and tell him right now. <laughs> well, what in the world did he say? He said not to make any sandwiches for beaver because the coach gave beaver permission to ride to the game with the team. <laughs> what do you mean he can't go? It's all set. I can't go on a car I promised Lori to go on a picnic with him up to Friends Life. You mean you'd rather goof around with him than watch me play football? What's the matter? Did you guys lose your oars? Yeah. Yeah, we lost them. You want we should watch your boat for you? Yeah, you can watch it. Come on, man, let's go. Wait. <laughs> is pretty serious. But we told you. Two nice boys gave it to us. Sure. They told us we could use it as long as we wanted. Are you in some sort of trouble? What kind of trouble? The man says I stole a rowboat. 
Stole a rowboat? Oh, Larry, you know your father's out of town. Why couldn't you have waited until he was home? Well, I'm in the police station. They think I stole a boat. Stole a boat? Yeah, Larry and I went up to the lake and some big kids lost us a boat. Now they say we stole the boat. And Larry's mother came and got him and I'm all alone here. Please come and get me well before Mom and Dad find out. Oh, uh, well, our parents aren't home. And I thought I'd sort of come over and kind of find out what kind of mess he's in. Well, we found him and the Mandelo boy in a stolen boat on Friends Lake and the boathouse had been broken into. Boy, Beaver. Oh, uh, hello? Oh, uh, you did, huh? Well, uh, well, were they the ones? Oh, uh, well, um, uh, oh, no. No, that's all right. No, he won't be sore at you. That was the police department calling you. We want to know why. Well, I can't tell you, Mom. Wally, the police department called you in some kind of trouble? Well, no. He can't tell you on account of he didn't do anything. I did. You did what, Beaver? I got arrested. Arrested? Yes, sir. The policeman says that Larry and I swept the rowboat. But it wasn't really Larry and I who swept the rowboat. It was two other guys who swiped the rowboat. <laughs> Wally? Yeah? You think on the next game you could fix it for me to ride with the team? Well, I don't know. I might. But don't you go counting on it, see? Sure, Wally. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 8, Beaver's Tree. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Oh. Have fun. Where? At school. Huh? Oh, yeah. That's pretty funny, Mom. <laughs> what does he plan who plants a tree? He plants it sap and leaf and wood. And fire can't stop a civic good God's blessing on the neighborhood. What are you worried about? My tree. His tree? What tree? Well, I remember a couple of years ago when it was my birthday and Dad gave it to me. Well, then I planted it and took care of it, and now I'm worried about it. Forget it, will you? I can't. I'm going over to the old house tomorrow and ask Mr. Benner if he'll give me back my tree. Well, Beaver, he won't give it to you. He bought it with the house. Well, what if I put the million dollars in the bank, and the man that owned the bank sold the bank? Would it still be my million dollars, or would it go with the bank? <laughs> well, of course it would be yours, Beaver. You could go and get it out of the bank any time you wanted to. Hey, Beaver. Don't you think we should have waited till Mr. Bader got home and asked his permission? Uh-uh. My mom said it's all right to take back what's yours. Beaver. What are you all covered with? Mostly dirt, Mom. <laughs> Boy, Beaver, Mom and Dad will blow their tops when they find out. Well, how can they get mad at me for taking some that was already mine? Well, I don't know, but they'll find a way. Oh, gee, Mom, you look ritzy. Yeah, Mom, almost as ritzy as when Uncle Harry died. <laughs> the tree in the side yard? No, well, just a minute. The Benners were away yesterday, and some of the neighbors tell them that our boys were over there and dug up a tree in the yard. That's ridiculous. Hello, Mr. Benner. I'm sorry. It couldn't have been our boys. They're not the type. Well, frankly, Mr. Benner, Well, now, look, fellows. We can't settle this now, but we'll be back here at 2 o'clock. In the meantime, you can just go up to your room and wait there. How come me? Do you want me to tell you how come you? <laughs> no, uh, no, that's okay. Uh, I'll just, I'll just go up there and wait. Beaver, I told you no such thing. Well, sure you did, Mom. You said if I had a million dollars in the bank and the bank was sold, it'd still be my million dollars. Well, Beaver, I did tell you that, but well, this is an entirely different thing. Beaver, we sold the house to Mr. Benner, and the tree belongs to him. You didn't have any right to go over there and get it. Gee, Dad, suppose one removed you forgotten me over there. Wouldn't you got over and gotten me? Certainly, Beaver. Dear, do you think Mr. Benner will understand all this? No, I don't think so. But if he gives me any trouble, I'm not going to tell him where the screens are. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. 
Episode 9, Teacher Comes to Dinner. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Ford, I wish we could do something nice for Beaver's teacher. Yeah. Of course, in my day, the families in town used to invite the teacher over to dinner. I guess it was more or less to make up for the miserable salary. I just wanted to talk to you. But, gee, Miss Landers, I haven't done anything. Well, I know you haven't, Theodore. I wanted to thank you and your mother for inviting me to dinner tonight. Oh, it was... My mother invited Miss Landers to dinner. <laughs> to eat? Sure, you can't invite somebody to dinner without letting them eat. Oh, boy, Beaver. Well, just listen to what that dumb Beaver went and did. He told his mother. <laughs> I'd take an extra bath for you sometime if it was important enough. Okay, okay. Well, Wally? Gee, a whole quarter, Larry? I don't think it's worth it. What do you mean? Did you ever see a teacher eat before? <laughs> okay. Do you guarantee positive that we'll see Miss Landers over at the Beaver's house? <laughs> then, Dad, when dinner's ready, would you please not have a soup song? Beaver, you can count on me. Harry, we invited the man I worked for home to dinner. Well, I was so nervous that I, I, I was carving a ham, and I dropped the whole thing right in my lap. It fell down on the floor, and I reached down to... Oh, gee, Dad, oh, gee! Come on! Oh, Miss Landers. Yes, Wally? Um, is it true that Andrew Johnson was the only president ever to be impeached? <laughs> Why, yes, I believe he was. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> okay, folks, come and get it. Soup's on. <laughs> Miss Flanders? Yes, Beaver? Uh, would you like another glass of water? No, thank you, Beaver. And you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> Mr. Cleaver, the steak is delicious. You're quite a cook. Thank you very much. And I appreciate your saying that in front of Mrs. Cleaver. Let me get you another piece of steak. Oh, no. no, no, no. But, Beaver, what do you think we should do about those boys up in that tree? You mean you saw them? Quite a while ago. Well, I didn't have anything to do with it, Miss Leathers. Really, I didn't. I... <laughs> Now, what were you doing up in that tree? I don't know. You were spying on us, weren't you? Larry sunk it up. Well, Larry thought it up. Three of my boys just dropped by to say hello to me. Oh. Well, uh, hello, fellas. Hello, Mr. Cleaver. Hello, Mr. Cleaver. Hello, Mr. Cleaver. Boy, Miss Landers, that sure was me. Well, Beaver, I think I can understand why they were there. Sometimes it's hard for little boys to realize that a teacher thinks and acts like a real person. Leave it to Beaver! Episode 10, Beaver's Fortune. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Coming off? Yes. He seemed a little upset this morning. There's a boy in the fifth grade who's picking on the boys in Beaver's class. What did you tell him? Well, I just told him to stay out of that boy's way and avoid him whenever he could. Hey, watch it, kid. I didn't do anything. Larry shut me. Watch who you shove him into, Larry. <laughs> you watch who you're shoving him into. I dare you to do that again. This is your lucky day. Fame and fortune await you. Boy, Beaver, that's neat. It's too bad you're a kid, though, and can't really be famous. How'd you like a punch in the nose? <laughs> Who's gonna give it to me? Well, last week I was sick for two whole days. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch what you're saying, that's all. <laughs> I'll bet you Beaver could, though. <laughs> Well, I kind of got to do something myself. But I tell you what, I'll meet you right here at 3 o'clock and beat you up then. Uh, you'll be here, won't you? Sure, I'll be here. What do you think he is, chicken? Okay. Gee, well, you started. 
How come I gotta fight him? <laughs> well, gee, Beaver, why should I get in trouble on your lucky day? <laughs> and Sonny said, who's gonna give it to him? So I'm fighting him at 3 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, but Beef, he's in the fifth grade. He'll murder you. No, he won't. On account of my fortune says it's my lucky day. Beaver, you're a goof. There's no such thing as a fortune. Well, okay, Mom. Uh, Beaver's fighting Sonny Cartwright over at the park. Fighting? With this? Well, sure, Mom. What else can he use? Warn! <laughs> June, not a mark on it. You won, huh, son? No, Dad. Sonny Cartwright didn't show up. Yeah. Everybody waited for a whole half hour and he chickened out. Oh, but suppose he didn't show up and I kind of had to go someplace with his mother or take another music lesson. Well, well, if that's what happened, I guess you just have to fight him next time you see him. Boy, just when everything's okay, there's always something to mess you up. <laughs> What's the matter, Larry? I called Sonny Chicken, and the big coward hit me right in the stomach. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 11, Beaver Makes a Loan. Starring Barbara Billingsley. I already asked her. She said to ask you. Well, well Beaver, I don't have any change. Gee, Dad, I gotta have a quarter, or I'm gonna get yelled at. <laughs> All right, I'll give you this dollar, but you be sure and bring me my change tonight. Oh, well, we gotta have our notebooks. I'm gonna go down and get mine now. Gee, Beaver, you got a whole dollar. Give me the one of a quarter. Well, it's not my dollar, Larry. I gotta bring home the change. But, gee, Beaver, I get my allowance tomorrow. Well, all right, where's my 50 cents change? I don't have it. When I get down there... Mr. Prouty told me I owed him 50 cents from before, and he wouldn't let me buy anything till I paid it. I want my change. Uh, I don't have it. Well, why don't you have it, Beaver? Well, you see, Mom, I was going to buy my notebook with a quarter, but Larry didn't have his quarter, so I loaned him a quarter. And the rest of the dollar got used up because he owed Mr. Prouty from before. And for a soda afterwards. But I'm not going to the movies, Mom. But I thought you'd been waiting all week to see that picture. Yeah, I know, Mom. But I'm going over to pay Beaver back the 75 cents that I own. Boy, <laughs> you can eat over at my house for free, and then we can go to the picture. Yeah? What do you have? <laughs> Hamburgers and pie. Yeah. But I gotta pay Beaver back. Yeah. Yeah. Why should I let that beaver push me around? <laughs> well, did you find out what was keeping Larry? No. His mother said he left his house a whole two hours ago to come over here. Well, I wonder what could have happened to him. Gee, Mom, maybe a lion got loose from a circus and ate him up. Well, the paper hasn't come yet. How about running down to the drugstore and getting me one? Okay. Well, as long as you're there, you might as well get yourself a soda. Thanks, Dad. Where have you been all day? Waiting at my house for you to show up. I was coming over, Beaver, but then I met Gilbert and Whitey. And I had to go to the movies with them. Isn't that right, Whitey? Search me. <laughs> How do you like that? Beaver calling me a rat. Yeah, but you know something, Larry? You are kind of a rat. <laughs> You have company. Is it real company, or is it that rat, Larry Mandela? <laughs> uh, Beaver, you come right down here. Uh, well, my sister named it Eagle, so it shouldn't be scared of anything. Gee, <laughs> how come you're bringing all that stuff over here? I'm giving them to you, on account I'm going away. Where are you going? To your grandmother's again? I'm going to Africa. Oh, I'm going to Africa to join the French Foreign Legion. What, Larry? I wouldn't go and get killed on the desert if you promised to be my friend again. <laughs> but how about my 75 cents? Uh, yeah, sure. My father said I should give it to you. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 12, Beaver the Magician. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Oh. 
mumbo jumbo presto watch now how's that who oh, take that wait a minute larry if we spend the whole 15 cents we won't have a penny to put in the slot squilly jumbo mumbo how do you do that beaver magicians aren't supposed to tell how they do stuff benji yeah Beaver and I could make his whole house disappear if we wanted to. Bo. Jumbo. Squiggle Alakazam. Beaver is a rock. Is that Beaver? Well, you better go right home. She sounded pretty angry. Yes, Mrs. Cleaver. Thank you, Mrs. Cleaver. It's a rock. Uh-uh. Well, what is it then, dear? Beaver. <laughs> Beaver? Beaver Cleaver? You heard Mrs. Cleaver say that Beaver has gone to visit his aunt. Uh-uh. Well, honey, Mrs. Cleaver's a big grown-up lady. She wouldn't tell a fib to a little boy. Beaver got changed. <laughs> Peter, just say something to him, huh? Uh, here, Beaver wants to talk to you. Hi, Beaver. Uh, how are you? Fine. Well, uh, so am I. Good. <laughs> you... Uh, look, Benji, you believe that was Beaver's voice you heard, don't you? Sure. Well, then where do you think he is? In heaven. <laughs> Why, we even had Beaver talk to Benji all the way from Aunt Martha's, and he's still not convinced. Ah, uh, heck, Mom. Don't worry. You get that little Benji over here. I'll straighten him out. Yeah! That's Larry, huh? Ginger back! Okay, Larry, come on out. Yeah, it was just a trick, huh, Benji? Sure! Now change this into beaver. <laughs> Me and Larry don't know how to change kids into rocks or sticks or anything. Yeah, you're climbing that wood box. <laughs> well, gee whiz. If you know how I did the trick, how come I had to come home? Because I used to didn't know it. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 13, June's Birthday. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Well, she says she doesn't want any fuss made this year, but uh, I think you should make a little fuss. How little of a fuss should we make, Dad? Oh, between the two of you, I think you could make at least uh, five dollars worth. Oh, gee, thanks, Dad. Yeah, it's a very attractive box. Anything in it? <laughs> huh? Hey, well, sure, Dad. It's a wallet, and it's pigskin, and it's got our initials on it, and there's a card to fill out in case she gets run over. Little boy, would you please not eat your candy bar over the blouses? Yes, ma'am. We want to buy one. For your girlfriend, Sonny? No, for my mother. It's her birthday. Oil well wells on it. That's the Eiffel Tower. It has 16 authentic Parisian landmarks. Boy, Beaver, French stuff is the most ritzy stuff you can get. Well, take it, lady. Hey, look, a tablecloth. <laughs> it's not a tablecloth, it's a blouse. Why, Beaver, it's, it, it's just beautiful. <laughs> Isn't it, Ward? Oh, uh, oh, yes, it's a real knockout. Hey, you do like it. Oh, of course I do, Beaver. I, well, I think it's beautiful. Then why won't you wear it? Well, well, all right, Beaver. I will wear it to the meeting. Boy, Mom, you sure look neat. Be sure and tell all the mothers I gave it to you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hey, Mom, are you really going to wear that thing in front of people? <laughs> yes, I told Beaver I'd wear it to the tea. Boy, you sure got nerve. <laughs> Look, why don't you go upstairs and put on something else? Then when you come home, you can put this back on. Well, that sounds so underhanded. Well, it's not going to hurt the Beaver any. And anyway, if he realized how ridiculous it looks, he wouldn't want you to be embarrassed. He had some chips. E-I-E-I-O With a chick-chick here and a chick-chick
chick there, here a chick, there a chick, everywhere a chick, chick, only the Donald has fun. Hi, Beef. Hi, Wally. Hello, Beaver. I thought your class sang very well. Thank you very much, Mother. <laughs> well, Beaver, I didn't really think it was the right thing to wear. You hated it. You really hated it. Beaver, I didn't hate it at all. Why did you say it was beautiful? Beaver, there are certain things people say to be kind. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 14, Tire Trouble. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Gee, Wally, to build a cage for him and keep him in the garage, and pretty soon they have our picture in the magazine. Well, how much does it say they are? It doesn't say. Well, it just says right for details. While we're writing for details, we can build them a cage. Yeah. What are you smiling about? Who, me? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I, I just thought of something funny that happened in school. <laughs> well, something funny's gonna happen around here if that garage isn't cleaned up and my tools put away. The garage is in the same condition it was in yesterday. Well, Ward, they got home late. That's no excuse. You should have gone out there and gotten it cleaned up the minute you got home. It was a very stupid thing to do to leave it in that condition two days in a row. Hey, Beaver, what are you doing? Trying to get this piece of wood and stuff from Dad's tire. Oh, oh, wait a minute, maybe it's. <laughs> Water. Okay, if you're chicken. <laughs> hey, why don't you just yank the thing off, take it down the gas station, and let him patch it? Then you can stick it back on before the warden gets home. <laughs> those two boys rolling a tire down the street. Yeah, uh -huh. it looked a little like your two, Ward, old man. You wetting the fingerprints off, Wally? Nah, I'm just getting the grease off. Wally! Beaver! Hey, Wally, you get that crazy flat tire back on the car before your old man caught you? Uh, what crazy flat tire was that, Eddie? Oh, hello, Mr. Cleaver. And, uh, did you two have a nice day getting the garage all spick and span for your old dad? Uh, you know something, don't you, Dad? Why would you say that? Well, on a kind of you wouldn't be so polite and everything unless you had the goods on us. You could have hit us. <laughs> you know I'd never hit you. Yeah, Dad, but if a guy gets hit, well, then it goes away. But if a guy's father calls him stupid or something, then it makes him feel bad for a real long time. Yeah, Dad. Once when I was in the second grade, he called me a little boob. And I still feel bad about that. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 15, Larry Heights Out. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hey, you got the window fixed. That's the window that was cracked. You knew it was cracked? Well, sure. Beaver showed it to me last week. Well, Wally, if you and Beaver knew the window was cracked, why didn't you tell me? Well, heck, Dad. Why get blamed for something you didn't do before you have to? Hey, you want to read something neat my sister's got? Nah, let's get out of here. Oh, look. It's her diary. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Mundell. How many times have I told you to stay out of your sister's room and leave your sister's diary alone? Gee, Mom, we weren't hurting anything. Well, you're going to be punished, Larry. And Beaver, you just better go on home, right? Larry. No, all right, Mom, so I looked at my sister's diary. But you shouldn't have hollered at me in front of my friend. He's the only friend I've got who'll come into this crummy old house. <laughs> Hello? This is Larry. Oh, hi, Larry. What are you doing? Nothing. Just shoot with myself. <laughs> I'm going away. Huh? I'm going away. What? I'm running away. Oh, no. Larry's gone. And his suitcase is gone, too. His sister's out with the car looking for him. And his father's in Cincinnati. Well, would you like me to go out and look for him? Hi, Molly. <laughs> Larry, what are you doing in our bathtub? I'm running away from 
going home. Larry's gonna sleep here in the bathtub tonight. Yeah? Oh, you don't even have your pajamas. Well, yes, I do. They're in my suitcase. Well, uh, well, where's your suitcase? Outside, in the bushes. I see. Well, uh, then you haven't heard from Larry yet. No, but I've been thinking this over, Mr. Cleaver, and, well, he and Beaver are such good friends that I think this is the first place he'd come to. <laughs> Larry's suitcase, it's going up in the air. You've had a long, hard day today. You know what would make you feel just great? A nice hot shower. <laughs> you fellas go ahead and get ready, and I'll turn the water on. Get it good and steaming hot. Oh, no, Dad, you burn a Larry. All right, Larry. You can come on out now. And he is going to get it, too. Yeah. And after he gets it, we're going to get it. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 16, Pet Fair. Starring Barbara Billingsley. I sure wish I didn't have to go to school today. Why would you say that, Beaver? Because tomorrow we're having a pet fair. And today, we got to tell what pets we're bringing in tomorrow. Well, Beaver, the reason you don't have a pet is because you didn't take care of your rabbit. And you... My parents have made me the proud possessor of a parrot. She's a parrot. A parrot? Well, can he talk, Beaver? Yes, ma'am. Smart as he is, it comes pretty high. I couldn't let Sergeant Burt go for less than 200 You mean $200? Yeah. Well, gee, mister, I don't have that kind of money. Hi, dear. Hi. Oh, something for me? Oh, it's for the beaver. You know, he's having that pet fair at school tomorrow, so uh, I stopped by and bought him a little hamster. On the way home today, I stopped by and bought you this hamster. <laughs> Gee, Dad, what a dirty trick to do to a guy. <laughs> well, on, he told all the kids that he had a parrot. A parrot? Yeah. And then he went down to Alan's pet store, and they had one that could sing over there. But it cost a couple hundred dollars. And then you came home with that hamster. Now he's upstairs pretending like he's not crying. What? You can get him a parrot. <laughs> get him a parrot? June, it's 9 o'clock at night. I don't care, dear. They cost $200. I didn't say you had to buy one. Just get him one some way. Oh. Well, I guess there's nothing for me to do but go out at 9 o'clock at night and find a parrot who sings over there. <laughs> Well, I uh, certainly hope $10 is a fair price for renting the bird for a day. Oh, yes. And Bert could use a day in school. <laughs> you won first prize, but how come your dumb parrot calls everybody boys? Because he hates girls, that's why. Uh... Well, I don't know if I should have this blue ribbon. Well, why not, Beaver? The children voted Sergeant Burke the most popular pet. I don't know, boys. Yeah, but he's not mine. He's read it from a store. All the other kids were saying about the neat pets they had, when I didn't have any. Oh, so I made up about having Sergeant Burke well, because I saw him in a store. You're a father. How come you did it? Well, maybe that's why I did it, Beaver. You see, parents aren't always perfect either. Sometimes they love their children so much that they'll do almost anything to keep them from being hurt. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 17, Wally's Test. Starring Barbara Billingsley. But uh, don't you have a midterm history test on Monday? Yeah. And uh, isn't history your weakest subject? Yeah. And which is more important, saying Mary Ellen Rogers or passing that history test? Well... You know how it is, Dad. Hello, Eddie. Good morning, Mrs. Cleaver. You know Clarence Rutherford. Oh, yes, of course. He was left back into our class this year. <laughs> how are your mother and father, Clarence? Hi, Wally. Hi, a Squirt. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Lumpy. Hey, Wally, tell your kid brother to stop calling me Lumpy. Hey, Beav, stop calling Lumpy Lumpy. <laughs> so all we gotta do is write down all the dates and the battles and the names of the big shots on a paper towel. 
Then we stick the towel in the towel machine in the school washroom. <laughs> what good is that? We'll be in the classroom. Sure, but during the test, we get excused to wash our hands. <laughs> Having trouble, Cleaver? Well, um, I got ink on my hands, Mr. Gannon. Can I please go wash them? To thine own self be true. Signed, Polonius and Mr. Gannon. <laughs> and it's gone. Gone? God. I knew this would happen when Cleaver came in here. I knew it. I'll cut it out. He's too square to get wise to anything. Hey, I can't find my name. Look further down, Lumpy. <laughs> 52? Heck, I got a 55 last year. Mark? Yeah, here it is. W. Rat Cleaver. <laughs> 92. Rat Cleaver? What's the matter with you guys? What's the matter? Please, Mr. Gannon, can I wash the ink off my lily white hands? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gannon? Yeah, this is Cleaver. Oh? Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll be there. So long. I mean, goodbye, Mr. Gannon. <laughs> Dear Mr. Gannon, you are being taken. History 2 contains a dirty cheat. He hid the answers in the towel machine and then spilled ink on his hands to get excused. Wally, you weren't going through those towels looking for the answers, were you? No, sir. I didn't think so, because I don't think you're that type of fellow. Oh, Wally, you've known Eddie since grade school. Do you really think beating him up's going to change him? Well... Maybe not. So I know you didn't steal my answers now. You know something, Eddie? That was the dirtiest trick you ever did, writing that note. Okay, okay, so it was. But heck, I thought you got my answers, and then you acted so crummy noble, you big fat 92. Well, I come over to tell you I'm sorry. So I better tell you, I'm sorry. Did Mr. Gannon make you come over? No. I kind of felt bad all by myself. <laughs> Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Bolivia, Brazil, and Canada. Well, that's fine. Uh, when you first got up, I thought you might be going to ask for permission to wash your hands. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 18, Beaver's Library Book. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Treasure Island. Look, okay, give me it. I used to have a copy, but I haven't seen it since we moved. Tell you what. On your way home from school tomorrow, you can stop by the public library and pick up a copy. Okay, Dad. Here, you can use my card. And... This is a one-week book, so be sure you have it back on time. The fine is five cents a day. Is that for kids, too? Yes, it's for everybody. Dear borrower, your book, Treasure Island, is now five days overdue. Please return this book as your accumulated fine amounts to 25 cents. Ten days, fifty cents. Fifteen days, seventy-five cents. Twenty days, one book. Well, I'm not in a mess as soon as I find the book. Sure you are. You owe the library a buck, don't you? You know what will happen next? What? They'll send a guy around. A library cop in a uniform. You know what he's gonna do if you don't have that book? Throw you right in jail. <laughs> we love your father and... He's very important to us all. Well, I guess we couldn't do it without him, huh, Mom? Not for very long. You sure there wasn't a man around looking for Dad today? Then what can I do for you? I'd like to ask you not to put my father in jail. <laughs> not put your father in jail? Yes, sir. He's got to make the money. Well, my mother's got to stay home and cook. Well, that book has to be replaced. And I think the best thing is to tell your father exactly what happened. Yes, sir. I think it is, too. 
I'm waiting for Beaver to come down and tell me he lost a library book and owes a dollar fine on it. How do you know all that? Well, Mr. Davenport from the library called me at the office today. Senator, you can talk to your father anytime. Oh. Well, then I guess I'll talk to him tomorrow. <laughs> you go in there now and talk to him. Yes, Mom. Well, I couldn't pay the fine until I found the book. So I hid the notices, hoping I was going to find the book. And then I'd pay the fine, and nobody'd know nothing. Nobody would know anything. No. Well, on the way home from school, I stopped off at the library and returned the book. Treasure Island. I thought you lost that book. Well, so did I. But they made a new rule at school. No food in the lockers. And when Larry cleaned out his junk, there was Treasure Island. It smelled kind of like a bologna sandwich. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 19, Wally's Election. Starring Barbara Billingsley. And now we're ready for nominations for president. Yes, Brown? Mr. Hyatt, I nominate Lumpy, uh, Clarence Rutherford for president. <laughs> Mr. Hyatt, I should like to nominate Wallace Cleaver. <laughs> I second the nomination of Wallace Cleaver. All right. <laughs> What's in it for you, Eddie? <laughs> What's in it for me? Wally's my pal. Anyway. A guy likes to have a friend in City Hall. <laughs> With me pulling the strings, we could put that school in our pocket. <laughs> yeah, sure, friend. Oh, I understand your boy Wally is running against Clarence. Tough break for your boy. Well, I don't think Wally's particularly interested in the elections, Fred. What are you going to do when you get out in the business world? You're going to just sit back and let all the other fellows get the advances and the promotions while you just... Uh, Stay at your desk in a little cubby hole in the back room? Well, gee, Dad, I was thinking about being a tree surgeon. <laughs> Look, you're in school. Here comes a student you don't know. You walk right up to him and you say, How do you do? My name is Wally Cleaver. I'm running for class president, and I'd appreciate your vote. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Um, I'm Wally Cleaver, and I'm running for sophomore president. I sure appreciate your vote. But, but, Wally, you don't have to introduce yourself to me. Well, I've known you since grammar school. Excuse me, uh, I'm Wally Cleaver, and I'm running for the sophomore president, and I... This character's only a freshman. Don't go being nice to people who can't help you. <laughs> oh, beat it, Buster. What do you suppose has happened to Cleaver? I don't know. He, he's always been so, so natural. Yeah, now since he's running for class president, all of a sudden he's making like a big wheel. <laughs> well, I'd rather vote for Lumpy Rutherford. At least he's always been a creep. How'd Wally make out? He lost. I had a feeling he would. Lumpy didn't win, did he? No. Wally told me the president of the sophomore class is somebody called the horse. Well, I'm afraid I made you look pretty silly with all my advice. Yeah. I guess a lot of the kids did think I was kind of creepy. But heck, Dad, I'll live. Well, anyway, son, I'm sorry. I... Hi, Lumpy. Congratulations, Wally. It's pretty good getting 52 votes. Yeah, it would look pretty good to a guy who got nine. 